what does the concept or the term secularism actually refer to? Does it refer to uh, disestablishment of religion? Does it refer to uh, atheism? Does it refer to um, anti-clericalism? Does it refer to the robust and complete separation of religion and politics? Or more narrowly, simply the separation of uh, the institutions of religion from the institutions of the state? Does it refer to you know, the equality of the state toward all religions, et cetera? So we need some clarity on the concept of secularism. And I encourage the panel to be precise in what they mean. Uh, and the reason why there's a confusion and um, debate over what the term means is, is um, my second point. There is not one history of secularism. People often forget this. They think that their definition of secularism is the only one and that everyone else is subscribing to that definition. And I tried to sensitize the audience to the fact that there are multiple histories of secularism, both within the Western tradition and within the non-Western world. Um, and then the third critical point that I tried to make, and I think this is really central to the confusion that exists on the topic of secularism across the Islam-West divide, is that when we in the West think of the term secular or secularism, we associate it with a set of positive attributes. We associate it with democracy, with human rights, with modernity, with development, um, something that's emancipatory and fundamentally good for society. In most Muslim societies today, um, the reverse exists. When people think of secularism, they don't associate it with freedom, democracy, and human rights, but they associate it instinctively with dictatorship, with despotism, with political tyranny, and with failed economic and modernization paradigms because the modern experience with Muslims on this question of secularism has bequeathed those lessons to them. And I'm referring to particularly the failure of the colonial and post-colonial projects um, in the Muslim world, um, these states that emerged during the 20th century that were um, modernizing, secularizing, um, bureaucratic, authoritarian states that over the course of several decades proved to be, largely speaking, failures. Um, they couldn't provide greater, um, raising, a greater standard of living, better life for their citizens, but also politically they became dictatorships, and there's many of them that I can think of. The Shah uh, of Iran you know, in, in, in amplified this. Um, you know, Saddam Hussein uh, across the Arab world uh, you know, pick almost any country you want, it falls into this category. And even the case of Turkey, although I argue Turkey is a unique case, even Kamalist Turkish secularism had its victims. That look, the question of religion's normative role in any emerging democracy or society is often one of the most difficult and emotionally charged questions to resolve. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's an ongoing process. It took the West several hundreds, of, several hundreds of years to work itself out. And then I ended by saying the Muslim world is just beginning on this journey to, to debate and to try and resolve how much religion they want in their political system um, and to do it on a, on, a, on, a, on a way that is based on an emerging consensus, a democratic negotiation and bargaining. Turkey is uh, fundamentally much further ahead than the rest of the Muslim world, but it's the beginning of the journey. And it's important to sort of uh, appreciate this.